world, welcome back to Razer RC. Uh, it's time to do the review video of the Techno ET410. So I picked this up a few weeks ago, uh, did an unboxing video, a build video, and have been running it for a few weeks now, and it's time to give you my thoughts. So I uh, just wanted to share my experiences so far, and um, we'll kind of rate this in a bunch of different areas from one to 10, 10 being perfect, one being terrible, five kind of being average, um, and then sort of rate them in those areas. So here it is, Techno ET410. I painted it green and purple, as mentioned before. Uh, threw down a few stickers. Yeah, one funny thing about the stickers is I noticed that um, looks like they have basically these like, they look like Transformer, Decepticon, and uh, Autobot uh, stickers on here that you can stick on your car. Um, thought that was kind of funny. They try to make them look like Transformer stickers without completely copying them, but I'm not really sure why they did why they did that. Actually, the other competitor in this class is the Hobel Hyper 10 TT, which TT actually stands for Transformer Truck, so I don't know if that's kind of a nod to the Ho Hobel Hyper 10 TT, um, but that truck's actually been sort of uh, carrying on the, the torch of 110 scale electric truggy four-wheel drives until this came out, so I don't know, maybe that's a nod to the Hobel. But yeah, here's my truck. So, show you what I actually am running in my particular kit. So yeah, uh, electronics wise, I'm running a Trackstar six and a half turn motor, 17 tooth pinion. Uh, I'm running a Hobbywing V3.1 stock spec ESC. That's I think 100 amps. Uh, seems to be fine for this. Uh, Sandwall receiver RX 481. And then an expert uh, 4000 series servo. This is the 4431. Uh, very nice servo, full size, a lot of torque. Uh, runs on six volts with uh, a lot of speed as well. Um, so yeah, what is the Techno ET410? As I mentioned, uh, ET410, electric, truggy, four wheel drive, 10 scale. That's what it is. Um, so kind of an unusual truck. What Techno did was basically take their EB410, their four wheel drive, 10 scale uh, race buggy, and then basically like sort of extend the arms, put on uh, stadium truck tires. Um, pretty much everything else seems to be about the same. Um, the shocks are a little bit different. You know, they're longer in front and back to give you a little more uh, travel. And obviously with the longer arms, you need longer shocks as well. But other than that, you know, as they say, it's like 95% parts compatibility with the EB410. And so, uh, yeah, they, I guess it was fairly inexpensive for them to release this and kind of, uh, open up the door to a, a whole new class again. Um, and so, uh, yeah, cool truck overall. So I'm gonna pull off the wheels here. So I wanted to talk about this in a bunch of different areas. Uh, first one being the build, and I do have a build video on this already, but build overall was quite good. Um, build's pretty much exactly the same as the EB410, really not much difference um, other than the, the longer arms and stuff. Um, the shock, uh, uh, stack or I don't know what you call it, the inserts here in the shocks are slightly uh, updated from the EB410 so the EB410 had problems with Eric sort of getting in there and uh, messing up the shocks um, they did revise that slightly so that is a little bit different overall I'm gonna give the build a 7 out of 10 um, the manual is really really good um, didn't find any mistakes but nice full color instructions a lot of uh, verbiage about uh, things to watch out for little tips and stuff um, they tell you about, you know, check for your logos of the T and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, really good uh, shock instructions. Um, the only thing I noticed is that, you know, they kind of tell you to put the O-ring in the shock cap later on, even after you've already built the shock. So that was, that was really the only thing I found what I would consider wrong with the manual. So, yeah, build overall is really good. A um, couple little things I did find problems with. Um, number one, the rear shocks actually will rub up against the rear drive shafts here. So you actually need to space them out a little bit. I put it in a one millimeter, you know, gray spacer, as you can see there. Um, otherwise they will rub, you know, I didn't notice that until after I ran it um, and noticed a little bit of wear on my drive shaft. So a little bit of a flaw there. Um, the other thing to note is actually that the O-rings and the shock stack inside the shocks here at the bottom, um, the O-rings do swell up over time so when you put everything together you'll notice it'll leak a little bit um, the o-rings will seem kind of small you have kind of a gap and a lot of like kind of a flutter um, when you move the piston in and out so those o-rings will actually increase in size they don't completely fit you know the, the entire um, 
shock quite right, I would say. Uh, my buddy Mike actually pointed this out to me, and I do think there's maybe a, a tenth or two of a millimeter of extra gap in there, so the, the O-rings kind of do still move up and down a little bit, but they will uh, swell up a little bit over time and, and sort of fix that problem, in my opinion. So that was not a big deal, but something you might notice. Um, no pre-cut wings uh, or bodies or anything. You do have to trim everything yourself. Um, and then the one big one, the shock caps on this kit uh, are the same as the EB410. They're plastic shock caps, really fine threads. Um, on the EB410, I had a lot of problems with that. On the ET410, I feel like they kind of improved it, so it's not quite as big of a problem. You know, with the EB410, I, it was almost like impossible for me to get some of those shock caps on, and you know, it's probably spent like half an hour just putting on shock caps alone. Um, it is better on the ET410. I'm still running, uh, I did upgrade to the aluminum shock caps, Personally, I find these still a lot better than the, the plastic ones. If you're on a budget, you know, you could probably stick with the plastic ones. If you got the money, I do think it is worth upgrading the aluminum ones. I, I assume all the team guys are probably running aluminum ones as well. So um, something you can use, but um, not as bad as the EB410. Still probably the main weakness of the, of the build overall. Uh, so yeah, upgrades. Wise, I'm really only running that. Uh, Lunum Techno Servo Horn, you definitely want to get that. And then I did actually change out the front sway bar to a, a softer EB410 sway bar. But other than that, pretty much a completely stock kit. Uh, very, very nice and fun overall. Doesn't really need a whole lot of upgrades, in my opinion. So, build 7 out of 10. Um, parts are made in Taiwan. Uh, they, about half the parts come on parts trees. Um, half of them are, you know, sort of. Uh, pre-cut or, or already removed off the trees for you. Everything is laid out really nicely in the bag so the, the steps are really clear and um, the bag order is really clear. Uh, very good build overall just the shock calves and some minor things like the the shock standoffs aren't, aren't quite right but uh, pretty good overall. Uh, second area I want to talk about is the design and as I mentioned it is exactly the same as the EB410 so what that means is basically all your electronics up front, servo, battery, shorty only to note, uh, motor, ESC, and receiver all in the front. It is definitely more of a front weight biased uh, type vehicle, but that works really well on the EB410. It also actually works really well on the ET410. A lot of nice uh, little features I like about the Techno. Uh, I mean, all the plastics are really good. Um, you know, a lot of neat little touches they do, like the, these shock standouts are actually mated into the shock tower, so when you unscrew this, little nut you don't actually have to hold down that uh, shock standoff like you do on the TLR or the associate or that um, what else is there um, yeah I mean captured uh, hinge pins um, everything was very smooth adjustable uh, pill system ABCD aluminum blocks um, nice aluminum drive shafts um, easily serviceable center diff front and rear disc you know you can basically pop off the front and rear of the disc and get those diffs out uh, Droop screws, excuse me, droop screws um, for adjusting droop height. Um, yeah, just, just a really nice kit overall, well thought out. Still doesn't quite have as many adjustments as some of the more modern cars like the Team Associate B64. Uh, that still has, I think, more adjustments than the EB410 and ET410 here, but um, really nice design overall. Only things I'm gonna really ding it for is uh, electronics, once again, are super tight up here. Um, you know, I have a little bit of experience now having run the EB410 and ET410, so it's reasonably clean, doesn't look too bad, but uh, it is, it can be quite cramped. You can't run like a super crazy, like uh, eight scale motor or eight scale EC. You definitely have to stick to like the 10 scale stuff, unless you want to do something about, you know, moving some electronics to the back here, but it really is designed for 10 scale stuff only. Um, you can run four pole motors or low turn motors, um, got 32 pitch gears on the spur and the, um, opinion obviously um, so yeah really nice design overall a lot of adjustments uh, things I don't like well they're still using that integrated spur gear with the uh, center diff so if you want to change the spur gear you got to pop basically pop open your center diff and remove that and maybe leak a little shock oil um, and that uh, not too much I think complaints wise about the design uh, really good overall uh, front and rear sway bars um, yeah, big 13 millimeter shocks. Overall, very, very good design. Um, quite happy with it. So I'm gonna rate the design an eight out of 10. Um, 
you know, the, the only thing I didn't like, the electronics, the shot caps. And then for you bashers out there, you do have to run shorty only. So it does limit your battery choices and maybe limits the market that this can kind of run at. Uh, things I think are a little bit over engineered. Techno is kind of <laughs> excessive in my opinion. Uh, they like to use left hand and right handed screws. So the shock uh, mounting screws here on the bottom you are these big hex screws um, they actually have a left-handed one and right hand one I'm not running that I'm just running right hand screws only on both sides and then on the rear I'm not using the hex screws actually I'm just using standard uh, button head screws right-handed thread only obviously so uh, that's one thing they also use little set screws here to capture in these bottom shock uh, cups um, is that really necessary in 10 scale uh, it's it's a little excessive but um there's a little bit of advantage to that i have had shot cups fall off so i guess overall it's a good thing but sometimes you look at some of these things you're like eh, why did they do that um uh, but yeah overall overall do like the design quite a bit eight out of ten so let's talk about the performance um that really is the highlight of this truck so uh talking about my history i also have an eb410 i also had the hobal hyper 10 tt uh, actually that was the very first video i shot for youtube check that out if you want to learn more about that truck but performance wise this thing is hands down awesome um, there's no comparison between this and the hobal hobal is it's okay but it has some steering issues has some pitching issues I actually have quite a bit of uh tips and tricks on how to get more performance out of the truck but this thing is dialed out of the box it runs awesome. I really like the EB410. The ET410 also runs super awesome. You run a lot of power. It lands uh, and jumps quite well. A um, little bit of a nose dive, but performance-wise, let's talk about it. So acceleration braking, just a ridiculous amount of traction with these big stadium truck tires. I did mention. I do want to mention you can run uh, either associated offset stadium truck wheels and tires, or you can run Traxxas Slash 4x4 uh, offset wheels and tires if you want to run short course uh, wheels and tires so um, yeah ridiculous amount of traction um, it's actually quite controllable under acceleration the the hobo tends to pitch forward and back quite a bit um, this thing is a lot more stable um, cornering it's not quite as nimble as the EB410 I think the EB can actually throw down uh, faster uh, laps in this thing um, not quite as nimble because it's obviously quite a bit heavier quite a bit bigger quite a bit wider um, but cornering is really really good I mean I, I made very minor changes to this truck just basically um, uh, put in a softer front sway bar, put in a little bit thicker rear shock oil, uh, play with springs a little bit, a little bit of uh, changes with the rear wing, but other than that, the, you know, it drives really well out of the, out of the box. Um, flying through the air, uh, it does nosedive. Um, it lands crazy plush. I mean, these giant wheels with these giant foams and these giant shocks. It, it lands like super flat, plush. And, uh, you know, something you guys on higher traction surfaces will probably want to do is maybe look into stiffer springs. Still running yellow on the front, but I'm um, trying out orange springs in the rear. Kind of seems better in certain conditions uh, when the traction moves up. Uh, so, yeah, performance, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. There's nothing as good as this in its class. Now, obviously, it is a small class class of two basically I mean there are other things out there like the stampede 4x4 that you can turn into a truggy I think HPI has sort of a you know not exactly race legal uh, truggy out there there are other things out there but for 110 scale four-wheel drive electric truggies this is going to be the best choice uh, performance wise it drives amazing just like the its brother the EB410 um, really no complaints overall it's, it's really fun um, handles just awesome Drives really awesome. You know, it's, it's just a blast to drive. So let's talk about durability. And uh, if you've seen my EB410 video, the, the main concern I have with that truck, or I'm sorry, that buggy is actually the front hinge pin. So the front hinge pins, was one area of weakness on the EB. They did update to super hard hinge pins, which are included on the, the ET410. So that's nice to see. But in my opinion, these longer arms, and these wider wheels that really just kind of extend out the the length of these arms and the the amount of leverage as being applied to those hinge pins you know it, it, it's kind of overwhelming for those hinge pins. so the things i've broken on this car are i've actually broken uh, hinge pins on both sides on the front um, and the problem with that is it actually tends to oval out the arms if not break the arms out completely um, it also 
damages the inserts as well. So you end up having to buy a hinge pin, an arm, and oftentimes an insert as well when one of those hinge pins breaks. Now, the, the conditions under which I broke those things were, were pretty severe. I mean, I was trying to quad this uh, jump. Um, if you've seen my running video, uh, there's actually a triple, sort of double-double. I You can also quad it as well. I, I lawn dart it, came up short, just destroyed this left-hand side, or the right-hand side. Also uh, failed on another attempt where I think I, like, I don't know, landed uh, off and it kind of flipped and then landed on this roof. That also broke um, a hinge pin. Um, I got nailed by a slash going down the front straight at, <laughs> at full speed. Basically, there's a slash going down the middle of the track. My buddy went left around it. I went right around it, which was fine because the slash started veering to the left but the problem is it hit my buddy and that launched it into my truck and this thing just went cartwheeling over end over end and cartwheel probably about eight or ten times um the other part i broke is actually uh the rear uh shock screw that holds on the piston so inside this thing you've got the shock shaft the piston and then a screw that holds that down um that screw basically just sheared off of the shock shaft also damaged the piston a little bit um, so i had to buy a uh, a shaft uh, a screw and then a piston as well to basically fix all those things i ended up changing out the steels as well just to be safe actually kind of damaged a little bit of this bottom piece but it didn't look like there's anything that was going to leak or anything so um durability i don't think it's uh great and it's really just those hinge pins problems. I'm looking to other solutions, trying other brands. Um, if you crash this thing in any sort of like moderate to severe condition, you are gonna break like a hinge pin. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, I wish, I think they're three millimeter hinge pins. They probably should have upped it to three and a half, if not four millimeter pistons. Hopefully they will revise that at some point because those things while it did pretty much fix for the most part the EB410 with these longer arms on the ET410. I, I think it's just not enough. So you will you will break arms, you will break inserts. Um, for the shock shaft problem, one thing I do recommend is actually using these droop screws. I don't run them on the EB410, but on the ET410, again with that uh, crazy amount of leverage. Um, pushing down on this arm, the only thing that is going to keep this shock basically, uh, or this arm from extending even more, is basically that little screw inside your shock shaft, right? So that thing, that little screw, that little, I don't know, two and a half millimeter screw or whatever it is, um, it's trying to hold back all these forces and uh you know basically that's too much for that little screw to handle so if you use that little droop screw set to basically the same length as your shock at full extension and that way when you know basically you apply a lot of forces in a crash or whatever this thing it's not going to put it all on that little set screw it will actually hold up against the droop screw as well and then hopefully uh reduce that problem of breaking that set screw so a little tip there durability wise uh, recommend so durability overall i'm actually going to give an average score it is more durable than the hobo but um the hobo has its own issues um but it's not what i consider a a you know overly durable truck it's okay um but the hinge pin is definitely uh, a problem if not even more so on this truck let's talk about maintenance and maintenance is really nice I actually have a video on how to adjust or basically take out the center diff and put it back. That can be a little bit tricky, um, but it's nice. You can actually get the center diff out with basically just four screws. You can get the front and rear diffs out basically with four screws after you remove the front sway bars. Um, everything is just really nice and easily accessible. One other uh, maintenance problem, you know, my buddy Mike ran into is, and I've heard this quite a bit, is actually that these little hexes will tend to spin inside of these plastic bell cranks. So. You don't want to put a lot of force on the screw. You don't want to put a crazy amount of Loctite. You may even want to put a little dab of glue on this to keep it from spinning. But um, if you ever have to service these these hexes here, those bushings or the screw on the bottom, um, that could be a little bit of a problem. Um, maintenance on the electronics can be a little bit iffy. Uh, like I blew out a capacitor on my EB410 and you know I basically mount it there underneath the center drive shaft, kind of a crazy place to put it but um that that's just um just cramped electronics you know if if you don't set up quite right it may be hard to get to your receiver or, or hard to get to the motor wire or whatever um so yeah maintenance is quite good overall but not perfect i'm gonna rate an eight out of ten uh next area is support and so 
Parts for this are uh, obviously available through A-Main, Tower Hobbies, your, hopefully your local hobby store. Um, the Hobo, really its main competitor. It's really hard to get parts. There's an eShop, um, Tower has a few things, but overall you're basically going to be ordering it online. Um, you know, your local hobby store is just not going to carry Hobo stuff. So uh, support actually for this kit I think is better than uh, other vehicles in this class, you know, the HPI, it's hard to get parts so I'm gonna read a 7 out of 10 um, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of setup sheets or a whole lot of like uh, driver support and stuff for this uh, kit because it's, it's obviously not a, a popular race class but um, overall support is above average uh, last category I want to talk about is value and so this kit retails for $129 here in the United States um, that is a little bit more than most of the four-wheel drive buggies at least the US made ones um, obviously quite a bit more than the Hobau Hyper 10 TT I think that so I think I paid something around $220 when that came out um, that price kind of fluctuates but you can get an RTR I think for under it's like 280 or it's under $300 so you're basically paying about twice as much for a kit you're still gonna have to buy electronics um, when it's all said and done you're probably somewhere around 650 $700 depending on how expensive electronics you put together so it is going to be quite an expensive project um, especially if you're not seriously you know racing this thing or whatever um, so value wise I'm going to give it a below average score I think it is on the expensive side now I realize they're not going to sell a ton of these things you know 110 scale electric truck is not exactly the most popular class um, so they can't really uh, price it super low but um, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 value wise I think the kit itself is really, really nice. I mean, three millimeter chassis, obviously really nice plastics. Um, just overall a pretty good kit, um, but it is on the pricey side. And so uh, that's pretty much my review. And so I just want to answer a few questions um, that aren't specific to like this kit or, or rating wise. So, hey, is it fun? You know, is this thing, if you just want to buy something fun, you're not going to uh, seriously try to race this thing. Um, yeah, it is a ton of fun. I mean, it just drives really well. You can put in a lot of power. Uh, it lands really well. You can, you know, jump it pretty high up in the air and, and it'll stick the landings. Um, yeah, just tons of traction. Overall, just a, a very fun truck overall. Um, I think anybody will enjoy driving this thing, uh, especially if you like power, grip, traction, whatever. So it is very fun. Is it a good basher? Um, or, you know, who exactly should buy this truck? You know, it's, it's kind of a weird cost because nobody really races 10 scale truggies. Uh, Roar actually has rules governing four wheel drive stadium trucks, and this is almost meets that criteria. I think the wing and the body are maybe not quite Roar legal, but um, everything else is Roar legal. The, the wheelbase, the width, everything, the tires and wheels, everything else is Roar Legal. So, you know, people are starting to race this thing. Um, it is sort of catching on um, and and showing up at your local club uh, race nights and stuff like that. Um, so who should buy this thing? Well, if, if your local track is supporting this class, hey, go out there, race it, have fun, go out with your buddies. I mean, I think that's a great thing, and I'm hoping all the other guys, Team Associate, TLR, X-Ray, whoever, um, comes out with a, a, a competitive truck as well. Um, but r realistically, it's really the only brand, the only kit out there um, for that class. So. Uh, racing wise it's, it's going to depend on where you live and, and what is offered locally now is it make for a good basher um, in my opinion not really I mean it kind of depends on your definition of bashing if you're just driving around the park just kind of going up and down your street it's fine but if you're trying to send this thing up you know two stories up in the air and trying to land off you know I don't know cars or whatever it, it's just not durable enough I mean if you, if you lawn dart this thing you're gonna break a arm a hinge pin whatever um, you know like if you look at the chassis there's just not a whole lot of support I mean there is intentionally flex in this thing and while that's good for traction and racing probably not the greatest thing if you you know basically try to bend this thing in half so uh, I think for bashing for light bashing you know just kind of <laughs> uh, more calm type of bashing I think it's okay but if you're if you're doing like hardcore smashing into curves and trees and stuff like that you're gonna break stuff on this track so um, hopefully that answers that question um, again for bashing you can only run a shorty you can't run eight scale motors you can't run eight scale electronics um, 
you know, and the durability may be a little questionable as well. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my review. Techno ET410, I do enjoy this truck. I mean, I don't race it or anything. I just drive it for fun at my local track. Um, it is fun, and uh, I plan to keep it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel as always. Hit the, you know, add notifications button. Um, share it with your friends. Watch my other videos. That all helps me. And I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Bye for now.